Zombie Apocalypse. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to Eco Talks with Sneha Manerikar. Sorry friends, for past few days I could not upload videos due to my exams. From today I'll upload videos regularly. Till now we have completed MCQs from Microeconomics, Macroeconomics, Production Economics and Econometrics. In upcoming videos we'll cover the remaining topics. In today's video we'll discuss few questions from Agriculture Marketing. So let us start our session with first question. The components of market includes A. Existence of product B. Existence of buyers and sellers C. Business relationship D. All of the above Answer is all of the above. The components of markets are those conditions which need to be satisfied for a market to exist. They are termed as components of market. Now these conditions are Condition number one is existing of good or commodity for transaction. Second condition is the existence of buyers and sellers. Third is the business relationship between the buyers and sellers. And fourth is the demarcation of area such as place, region or country. Nowadays this fourth condition that is demarcation of area is not valid because of digitalization and marketing. And the existence of perfect competition or uniform prices not the necessary condition. The next question is the market forces includes A demand, B supply, C prices, D both A and B. Answer is both A and B. The market forces includes the supply and demand which determine the allocation of resources at and the relative price of goods and services or assets in the market economy. Now the term supply refers to the quantity of the commodity or service that the supplier is willing to sell at a particular price in a particular market. On the other hand, demand refers to willingness and ability to purchase the particular commodity at a particular price in particular market. In village market, the transaction takes place between A, buyers and sellers of the village, B between village traders and wholesalers, C between primary wholesalers and the secondary wholesalers, D none of the above. Answer is buyers and sellers of the village. In village market major transaction takes between the buyers and sellers of the village. Whereas on the primary wholesale markets the major transaction will be between farmers and primary traders and in secondary wholesale markets the major transaction will be between village traders and the wholesalers. The classification of market based on place of operation includes A. Village market, B. Regional market, C. Short period market, D. Wholesale market. Answer is A. Village market. Now market is classified broadly on, on the basis of 12 broad categories which includes uh, classification based on location, area or coverage on basis of time span, basis of volume of transaction, nature of transaction, then number of commodities transacted, degree of competition, nature of commodities, stage of marketing, extent of public intervention, type of population served, and basis of market functionary and actual of marketing margins. So there will be a sure question from classification of market. On any one of the category will be surely asked in every time in the exam so the, it is important this is the important question and we need to remember the in detail classification and under on each category which are the markets the next question is the functional growth of market is correctly expressed by a general specialized dealing in sample then dealing in grades b general dealing in samples specialized then dealing in grades c general specialized dealing in grades dealing in samples d general dealing in samples dealing in grades and d and specialized answer is the functional growth of market is expressed as general specialized dealing in samples and dealing in grades then for a, there are four stages in growth of market which include first stage is general market where the all types of commodities will be marketed in second stage, 
as the market grows the market will become the specialized market for a particular commodity as the market grows further the traders or the participants they start dealing with the samples and lastly they start with dealing with the grades the when a market grows it goes through this four stages of growth and the marketed surplus and marketable surplus are classified under a consumer surplus b producer surplus c economic surplus d none of the above answer is producer surplus the producer surplus is classified as marketable surplus and marketed surplus marketable surplus is that quantity of produce which is made available to non farm population by the farm population after meeting it, its requirement it is given as marketable surplus is equal to total production minus the total requirement of the farmer whereas marketed surplus is the actual quantity of commodity that farmer he sells in the market irrespective of his requirement for family consumption farm needs and other payments factors affecting marketable surplus a size of holding b prices of commodities c requirement of seed and feed d all of the above answer is all of the above here is the list of factors affecting the marketable surplus first is size of holding as the size of land increase is more the marketable surplus will be more then production the quantity of produce the higher the quantity greater will be the marketable surplus the price of the commodity price of commodity has both positive as well as negative relationship with the marketable surplus then size of family this is the inverse relationship as the size of family increases family consumption needs will increase so marketable surplus will decrease same is the, in the case of requirement for seed and feed now as the requirement of seed for seed and feed will increase marketable surplus decreases then nature of commodity for perishable commo commodities like fruits and vegetable marketable surplus will be equal to the marketed surplus in consumption habits the consumption habits now in case of north india now their uh, consumption habits is mostly wheat so marketable surplus will be more in case of rice in north india that which will be opposite in case of south india this is how consumption habits will affect the marketable surplus now next marketable surplus is greater than marketable marketed surplus in case of a small and marginal farmers b big farmers c landless laborers d all of the above answer is big farmers this is because the big farmers or the large farmers they have the storage facility so they store the commodity and they sell based on the market conditions so in this case marketable surplus will be more than the marketed surplus the relationship between marketable surplus and marketable surplus in some cases marketable surplus is greater than marketed in some cases it is less and in some cases it is equal as i told you marketable surplus is equal to marketed marketed surplus in case uh, case of perishable goods and also in case of cash crops like sugarcane whereas in uh, marketed surplus is greater than marketable surplus in distress sale or for the small small and marginal farmers next question is the relationship between price and marketable surplus is positive this concept is given by a dandekar and rajkrishna b mathur and ezekiel c philip kotler d none of the above answer is dandekar and rajkrishna these two person gave that the relationship between price and marketable surplus is positive whereas mathur and ezekiel they told that the relationship between price and marketable surplus is negative when the price in the market is determined by a interaction of retailers and consumers b forces of demand and supply c interaction of traders d all of the above answer is forces of demand and supply determine the prices in the market now the point where demand and supply curve intersect this is the 
equilibrium price and this is the price when determined in the market that is at this point quantity demanded and so quantity of supply is equal so this is the price prevailing in the market the concept of agriculture marketing includes a input marketing b output marketing c both a and b d none of the above answer is both a and b agriculture marketing includes input marketing such as marketing of fertilizers electric farm electricity requirement and also the output marketing that is produce marketing and any single activity performed in carrying a product from a point of production to point of consumption is known as a marketing function b marketing c market activity d market conduct answer is marketing function marketing function is defined as any single activity performed in carrying a product from point of production to ultimate consumer then a marketing function may have any one of or the combination of three dimension that is time space and form these are the few marketing functions are listed here like packing processing transportation buying and selling etc next question is facility to function includes a standardization and grading b storage and warehousing c transportation d buying and selling answer is standardization and grading is classified as facilitative function now marketing function is classified on based on di different persons have classified it on different criteria now first is thomson according to thomson he classified marketing function as primary market primary functions secondary functions and tertiary functions here the, the list of marketing functions under each category and according to coles and wool he classified as physical function exchange function and facilitative function now here standardization of grades comes under the facilitative function and according to hugen and mitchell he classified as physical movement functions ownership movement functions and marketing management functions then the sorting of unequal lots of produce into different lots according to quality specification is known as a grading b standardization c quality control d all of the above answer is grading grading is defined as sorting of unequal lots of produce into different lot according to the quality specified a standardization means determination of standards to be established for different commodities a standards have been uh, established on certain characteristics such as weight size color appearance texture moisture etc and on this basis the products are standardized and these are termed as grade standards whereas grading means sorting of unlike lots of produce into different lots according to the quality specifications laid down now grading follows standardization that is so it is the sub function of standardization first we standardize the grade uh, the criteria uh, known as grade standards and then we go for the grading of the commodity there are grades which are fixed and do not change over time and space are called as mandatory grading b permissive grading c centralized grading d variable grading answer is mandatory grading now types of grading first one is fixed grading which means sorting out of goods according to size quality and other characteristics which are fixed and they do not vary over time such type of grading is called as fixed or mandatory grading the second type is permissive or variable grading in which grades will vary over time and this type of grading is not permissible in india third is centralized and decentralized grading based on degree of supervision exercised by government agencies on grading it is classified as centralized and decentralized under centralized grading system a authorized packer either sets up his own laboratory with the qualified chemist and as a six the access of to, and to an approved grading laboratory set up by the state authorities or association grading in respect of commodities such as ghee butter and vegetable oil is under the centralized grading system then decentralized grading system is implemented by state marketing authorities under the supervision and guidance of dmi that is 
Directorate of Marketing and Inspection. That's all about today's session. If you have any doubts, you can ask in comment section or message me on Telegram group EcoTalks. Thank you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.